Welcome to our new YouTube channel, The Heritage Diaries. This will be our first video, which uh, is on the paintings of Ajanta, that is the classy and trendy costumes of Ajanta paintings. We are uh, going to start a number of uh, videos and uh, some untold stories, facts, facts and information, uh, historical information, probably not much known to people that we will be narrating and also showing the pictures etc. So we are now prepared and ready for starting this new YouTube channel, uh, Heritage Diaries, which I hope will be interesting to all of you. Welcome to our uh, new YouTube channel again, The Heritage Diaries. Ajanta is a group of rock cut caves, exclusively Buddhist, located in India, in the state of Maharashtra, very close to the historical city of Aurangabad. It is famous for its unique paintings and also it stands first in the heritage list of UNESCO. It is very important, uh, I mean these caves are very important and they are totally 30 in number. The paintings are mostly in cave number 1, 2, 9, 10, 16 and 17. Most of these paint, paintings are all about the rebirth of Lord Buddha. The earliest cave is cave number 10 that is belongs to the 2nd century BC and we have the earliest paintings in this particular cave. Cave number 9 belongs to the 1st century AD and cave number 1, 2, 16 and 17 belong to the 4th to the 5th century AD. They are later caves and have the later paintings. Once you actually go inside and the light is focused on these paintings, you have a feeling you, it appears as though an entire drama is enacted before you. It looks so real. In fact, when I first went there, I was staggered and astounded to see the real life drama which you can see in the Ajanta paintings. It is very surprising. Now, amongst these particular highlights, there are many highlights of Ajanta paintings. One particular highlight which I have chosen for this particular video is the chick classy, trendy and exotic paintings or costumes of Ajanta paintings. If you see the costumes, you will really be surprised. They look as though they are from the modern era. As you go to the early paintings, the early paintings have very simple, artless and very, very uh, common kind of uh, costumes. That is dhoti, which is known as loincloth. So loincloth is something or the dhoti is something which is common amongst both men and women. Of course, in the early paint paintings, they were very short dhotis. Later period, they have different sizes of dhotis. Again, there was some kind of a claim by a few scholars who said that in most of the paintings or in the ancient period, stitched garments were not worn. But interestingly, when you read books, I read the book of uh, Dr. Dhaurikar. Uh, a cultural hi history of Ajanta paintings or the cultural history of Ajanta. And the second book is of Modi Chandra textile costumes, uh, coifers of India, ancient India, where they have clearly written and have, as evidence they have shown the paintings of Ajanta where stitch garments are seen as early as 2000 years old. So it is, it is very surprising that you can see those stitch garments so early. And as I said earlier also that dhotis are common and they are worn by the royalty, they are worn by the simple common people and the only difference between the um, is the fabric which is silk for the royalty and cotton for the common people. As mentioned earlier, dhoti that is loincloth was the most popular amongst both men and women, rich and poor. Now the first plate that you are seeing is from cave number 10, uh, which is something like 2nd century BC, earliest cave, where you find the most earliest paintings. Here you can see a royal couple shown wearing silk dhotis that are extremely short. The difference between the common and the royal draping of dhoti was only in the fabric as royalty was silk dhotis and the common people cotton. Now another figure which you can see in the same cave is a costume which is very very interesting 
and very rare where you can see as early as the 2nd century BC two hunters wearing tunics similar to modern kurtas there is absolutely no difference between them except for they are knee length a little above the knees and one is wearing a stripe design and the second is wearing a cobweb design cobweb design which you see here is very rarely seen after that after this particular uh, panel neither in the early case nor in the later case now the third picture exhibits soldiers wearing simple cotton tunics tied at the waist with a long cloth the sleeves are short what i find interesting in both the costumes of the hunters and the soldiers is that both these people wear full uniform that is they wear the uttariya and the antariya uttariya is the top uh, garment and antariya is the lower garment so the full i feel that probably it was a uniform a military uniform um, and the next scene which you see here is of a king and queen where the queen wears a choli which is a tight fitting choli and a very interesting choli as you can see uh, again she is also wearing a dupatta now in the next picture is a famous group of village women wearing heavy dupattas you can feel that the dupattas are very heavy it has a border and they also wear short dhotis similar to the earlier period i mean all earlier period wears the short dhotis this is a painting where the only painting where you see large bindis on the forehead of these village women this is again in cave number 10 In the sixth plate, you see a monk wearing a double robe. That is one robe in underneath and another above that covers him from neck to feet, and the color of the robe is orange. We come to the later period. The costumes draped in this period are from the third century AD to the fifth century AD, generally referred to as the Vakataka Gupta period, as many of the later caves were. patronized by the vakataka rulers and their ministers as per the inscription in cave 16 translated by dr ramesh gupte in his book ajanta elora and aurangabad caves the change was due to the intense trade activities between india and foreign traders like the arabs greeks persians central asians africans and chinese the trade was not only import and export products but also an impact of costume on each other foreign impact on costume can be seen by the presence of several foreigners like persians chinese greeks romans and relations and also its impact on the indians costumes have been categorized as per the classification of society in ranks of professions like the monks royalty ministers commanders soldiers hunters attendants etc etc this category actually i have done uh, in my coming book which is under publication that uh, is a fashion trends in ajanta paintings and aurangabad sculptures now you the fabrics used by the higher classes was generally muslin many types of silk and fine cotton as well as linen so these were the fabrics which were used only by the higher classes though lower classes probably could not afford this kind of cloth which was very expensive in those days while the common people generally used different types of cotton from good cotton to very crude cotton but interestingly at ajanta the common people like attendants and servants can be witnessed wearing the most fashionable costumes with some exquisite designs as we come to the later paintings in cave number 17 is one of the masterpieces of lord buddha it is known as the mother and child panel where buddha has come visiting his wife ishodhara and son rahul This panel is often referred to as the magnum opus or the masterpieces produced by an artist. It is a painting 
where as the light is focused on this particular painting you find that buddha spiritually has risen to a new height and it is no match for the ordinary or the common people it is one of the greatest achievement of the painters of ajanta the next painting is of the queens or the princess which i feel that probably the royalty has been given a special place by making their costumes some of the most exquisite and beautiful costumes that you can see here in cave 2 queen mahamaya is standing in the most artistic pose and she wears a transparent uttariya and an antariya uttariya that is the upper garment is a tight choli which is not clearly visible but the antariya that is a tight skirt is clearly visible where it is of muslin and embroidered in pure pearls and precious stones in horizontal designs this fabric is so rich that it was specifically worn only by the cel celestial damsels the next panel which you can see is a famous royal princess in the toilet scene in cave number 17 now again she is also draped in the most fancy costume probably dhaka muslin with the tight skirt decorated with embroidery again of pearls and rubies it is supported by a beaded belt a beautiful dupatta hangs behind in folds the dupatta generally does not perform any functional work but it is only a decoration uh, this is a very famous painting in cave uh, number 17 Uh, it's known as mother and child here you can see Ash yashodhara and rahul uh, who are all prepared and ready for welcoming lord buddha yashodhara is all dressed up and she is dressed up in more in a very ornate costume very decorative costume she her neck she has tied uh, uh, a scarf which is uh, again uh, supported by a brooch gold brooch in the center with uh, pearl tassels on either side Uh, she is wearing a brocade costume uh, where you can see the front uh, portion and it is sleeveless and at the back side she is tied her uh, hair and her costume with ribbons she is wearing a uh, antariya a low garment which can seen can, which can be seen partially and that is supported by a girdle so this is one of the pinnacle of uh, ajanta paintings and uh, a very interesting uh, picture that i think you many people many visitors will be interested in seeing this particular painting of uh, yashodhara and rahul in the next plate is a princess in cave number 17 who wears a costume that seems to be very similar to the present modern outfit of a top with short puffed sleeves and long skirt in huge floral design now this is a costume if you see without this particular uh, continuation of the later period of ajanta paintings probably one would have thought that this is a common picture of any modern girl who is sitting around with modern outfit but here this is a this is again a costume which is born in the early period as far back as 15 or 1600 years back Examples of several more incredible and breathtaking costumes can be witnessed as borne by the royal females but comparatively the royal kings as shown are mostly dressed in silk loin cloth and bare chest this is very stereotypical because the kings only wear the dhotis mostly in silk of course they are uh, of very rich cloth but they are mostly bare chest but while all the kings in ajanta are wearing the same stereotypical dhotis of silk comparatively when you see the prince or kings participating in wars or hunting their costumes differ it's a different story altogether as you see them uh, in the the wars or while hunting in one of the jatakas that is a mridak mrig jataka The prince wears a tunic with front buttons, long sleeved and tight fitting trousers, better known as swasthan. Now swasthan means chudidar. The prince is on a hunting expedition. Now this kind of a dress, this kind of a tunic, it is 
very very much like a jacket which is tight collared and with front buttons long sleeve and also with a little of embroidery at uh, the sleeves sleeve side and the collar in another hunting expedition you can see several characters most of them wearing a tunic generally known as barwan as per moti chandra in his book titled textiles costume and cosmetics of india barwan is like a modern kurta a little above the knees and a churidar which was known as swastan now here you can see the kurta is very decorative because at the sides they have flaps and it is cut into a design military costumes in ajanta to consist of the tunic either short sleeved or opal sleeved with a dhoti or a churidar probably as i said earlier this was the military uniform as you come to the ministers of the wakataka period they are seen wearing most simple but elegant and refined attire a minister in hamsa jataka wears an antariya mid thigh length an upper garment of long sleeves round neck and a shawl around the left shoulders which means he wears the upper garment which is long sleeved he wears the lower garment which is a little above the knees and also a shawl around the left shoulders it looks very elegant and very graceful as we come to the next panel of dancers they wear probably the most smartly dressed draped in hip and saucy clothes as they entertain the public the famous dancing panel seen in cave 1 of mahajanaka jataka showcases the dancer in the center surrounded by the musicians the costume of the dancer is one of the best example of well stitched tailored dress as evidence of high degree of polished urbanity with different materials like silk and cotton as well as different designs like ikat and tie and dye another panel of dancer in cave 2 who wears an extremely diaphanous muslin top and a striped skirt with a dupatta this is one of the most classic pose in ajanta this dancer actually is from a panel which is called as the punishment scene now this particular dancer wears a skirt of striped skirt which is called as the muslin which was very common and very popular in deccan and very rare so this kind of muslin striped muslin has been worn by the dancer in cave 2 and it is one of the most beautiful paintings the paintings also have some of the most comic and humorous characters especially on the ceilings there are several common men and women also in interesting costumes which can be witnessed in the painting some of the female costumes of very ordinary section of society are absolutely amazing and highly fashionable why you can see the banarsi babu and oriya in the champia jataka of cave 1 you can see a maid servant sitting on the floor in typically desi style who wears a cholaka with apron front striped lungi and a lower back bare there's another female servant sitting on the floor wearing a tight green strapless dress in sarong style very common among early philippines foreigners also can be seen in the panel of pulakis in second where three persians are seen in peak caps kabas kabas is a long coat with sleeves and buttons open at the front in striped material and tight trousers and boots there are several varieties of costumes and one needs to visit ajanta to view this fantasy world other fascinating highlights at ajanta which we will be talking about in our next videos thank you very much